Hey, welcome back, Gay. This is Ben with Studio on the Lake. So here, you saw a review process there. I'm just putting the glue on the top of the head there. And uh, this is that ball we took apart. And I'm just gonna glue the front of it initially right now, and then we'll figure out the rest. Is it me, or does that other gray hair that was it there looks a lot like that? So she gets a little bit more paint. Uh, and I'll show you that. This, this video is not primarily for that. Hey, for those of you looking at a saw like this, like Jordy has, it cuts on the down stroke. And you, you figure out these small blades by running your thumb up and down it. Because if you're like me, you, you can't see those, those things anymore. Most projects, uh, I have a little more thought to it. This morning, it was hot here. Or, or rather cold here in uh, Wisconsin. It's like 37 degrees, so I started a fire. And while I was grabbing some uh, some wood out of the pile, I ran across this piece. And that's always the danger with a wood carver is you see a piece of firewood and it, it's too interesting or has something unique about it and you're not able to uh, throw it in the fire. This this one told me, hey, this I'm a wood spirit and my hands are out. So I thought we'd give it a try. So while I, I mess around with this, this this stuff is is it's a piece of pine, obviously. It's it's a little bit damp. Um, and it's just fuzzing like crazy. I mean ridiculously fuzzy and tearing. And you'll you'll see shortly here that I, I give up on this. But uh, there's is or I give up on, on, on the rotary. Uh, coarser burr on that uh, and, and, and switch to a knife which is proof that it actually can be done with a knife so you see he got uh, like a forehead line eyes sockets up there uh, the nose was cut in and I laid out the mustache lines and uh, once again I just did it by where I thought it ought to be uh, a lot of times uh, I find it a lot more fun not to work from a pattern because you come up with some unique pieces. Uh, in this video, which runs about 15 minutes, I, I recommend you you hang with the whole thing. You saw early on there that uh, I, I have another uh, video in the works in a, in a spirit house done with a piece of cottonwood bark and then some basswood behind it. That was at the beginning of this. If you missed that on the run through, go back. There will be a video coming out on that. And then uh, the latter half of this in different sections, I'll, I'll skip around a little bit because I didn't have a real video plan. Uh, well, I did, but it was scrap pieces of cottonwood. And while I, uh, this is a sad tale, uh, a week or so ago, um, I went ahead and filmed about four to five hours uh, just messing around with uh, scrap pieces. And, and some other stuff that was in there. I also filmed a uh, review of a $80 Chinese rotary carver that I bought. And then along with that, I, I set up and filmed the five basic power carving uh, burrs that I use. And then when I came in to put it on the computer to download them, uh, it said format unreadable, card needs formatted. And I, I could not get those back. And uh, to be quite honest, it was it was messing up in the camera. Uh, the camera wasn't reading it at the end either. So that's the first time that I, I've had any any bad luck with that. This is a little saber tooth uh, burr, one of my favorites. It's a little uh, uh, wedge shape, and I, I'm just going to cut some some eyes in there real quick. I really like this guy. Uh, he's been sitting in the house here next to my chair. Uh, and, and after I got back from doing what the normal stuff you do during the day, I looked at it, I was holding it. And it I'm thinking I might go ahead and carve him in the round, carve a face on the back, and then hang him by a string and go out and, and uh, hook him over a branch somewhere.
all told, I, there's probably a half an hour in this guy. And that's simply because of the finishing. I played around with with some different finishes. I, I My preferred finish is actually either a linseed oil or uh, shellac. And then sometimes I'll use uh, aniline dyes or uh, water, water-based aniline dyes. So we jump back to her. Uh, her hair seemed to have dried in the last uh, 45 minutes. And you can see that she has the initial paint on there. And then I noticed that uh, I had put a protective coat over her, uh, a matte layer, so I could, I could layer some more paint on there. And her eyes are painted over, which I do on all of the carvings. Those are glass Tohican eyes, and uh, you just take a knife and scrape that stuff off, and they come right back to life. You can see her cheeks are a, a lot rosier, and her dress has just started, or the sleeves are, are just started there, and I'll go back and refine those. I, I got enough of her done that I don't have to be concerned about uh, painting the hair. So there. She'll show up in a future video completely done, but she's uh, looking pretty good there. So th this is a ruby bit. Uh, this is one of my new new rubies. I pretty much had worn my old ones out and I'm just defuzzing this guy. I am, I'm cutting a couple of lines in there where there weren't lines before, but by and large, I'm just defuzzing him. When you do these spirits, uh, if you're like me, you'll find out that the faster you do them and you don't give them a, get it too much thought, uh, the more interesting they will come out. Because let's face it, uh, nobody really knows what, what the heck these things look like. They're old men uh, in, a, in a tree, and uh, they came about because somebody had looked at a, a, a burl or a branch or a root that was uprooted and they said, that man, that looks like an old man. That's a tree spirit. You can see that I, I went ahead and took that over the band so I was a little bit long in the stick form and I kind of wanted it to fade away at the bottom there, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time, made a real quick cut. And I, I'm really liking the looks of this character. <coughs> So there's my standard uh, upside down wedge uh, inverted cone that's made out of ceramics and uh, you can see from the tip of it it gets a little hot. Uh, basically it's, it is cutting but it's doing more of a burnishing thing and I'm just putting the, uh, the mustache hairs and refining a couple lines with that. Kind of figured his mustache would flow down to his arms and kind of over the front just a little bit and then the beard would pick up in the middle and then head on down. All the stuff that you see in here that's speeded up, um, it's speeded up three times. I thought I'd, I'd grab out, out my uh, little mini torch and see if I could burn some more of that fuzz off there. And I, I was trying not to get too carried away. As Jordy uses a flapper, um, I don't I haven't used that. Although I am, I'm gonna one of these days. I'm gonna go over to the metal side of the shop, uh, into the machine shop, and uh, I'm gonna crank one of those things out. A little flap sander. It should be pretty straightforward. Turn the mandrel, uh, tap and drill it, put the screw in there, and of course, uh, as Jordy says, use the uh, brass washers. So here's a piece of uh, 4 steel wool. I have a big old huge roll I keep around. Uh, this is another of my go-to finishes, although this one was kind of special. This was uh, uh, Johnson's Pace Wax. It does a nice, nice job finishing this wood. And I used it on guitars and antiques uh, when I used to restore and repair uh, both of those. And this one has a, a dark dye in it and it works real nice if you're trying to repair some scratches on on an antique piece that's uh, like a fumed oak if you know what i'm talking about 
Uh, it's dark English oak typically and it's fumed. They put it in a, a room with ammonia which would kill you and, and, and the tannin in the wood reacts to the ammonia. So there he is and here's a piece of scrap. Uh, the one on the right is a piece of bark that I found this morning uh, when I was cranking the fire and the one is a piece that was cut off of a piece of cottonwood. Uh, and how I got this started, uh, it was Jordy in a, a package he sent me here a while back. He sent me a small uh, spirit man and I, I think that there's, I, I filmed that towards the end. And I filmed it in one other video when we opened that and uh, it, it's just the most perfect spirit man I've ever seen. And it told me what I can do with these scraps. Well, this is a, uh, I, I'm assuming this is a piece of pine uh, bark from one of the, the great pines, northern great pines that we have around here. And uh, all told, this guy was carved in about 10 minutes. And I, I probably screwed him up when I was messing around with finishes, but uh, I really kind of liked him too. That'll show you how quickly those things can be done. There we went from a uh, cuts all and switched over to a, a ruby burr, which is more of a sander polisher. This one's a, uh, one of the more aggressive ones. And you can see I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on the beard. I just kind of went with what was there. And uh, there's my go-to uh, stone. And I'll come back and finish that. And I'm just using that to cut the lines. And I'm allowing it to burn just a little bit uh, on some of the, the spots. And really, this is uh, cutting real fine lines in that uh, if you put it out in the, uh, expose it to the weather, it would weather down really nicely. Uh, this this guy has no chance of it. He'll probably end up stuck in a cubby hole somewhere, or uh, in a plant that uh, you you won't notice him for a long time, and then all of a sudden he'll he'll magically appear. But I was I was real pleased with this guy. You, you notice I'm not trying to do um, round noses anymore. A lot of them I, I have a tendency to go off on some kind of a beak square nose looking thing. I had to resist the temptation to go crazy with the wood burner. And I settled for just doing a few, a few highlights. This this was an experimental uh, piece on the finish. I thought I got this stuff, this uh, dark paste wax. Might as well put that on there. I, I kind of wish I hadn't. Although I'm going to take a bunch of this off. I, I really wish that I had just uh, put a coat of amber shellac or whatnot. And, and here's a little trick. You can you can put the uh, wax on a paintbrush and get it down in the cracks and the crevices and then uh, something I learned in the military uh, go ahead and uh, and burn this thing off well there's the signature going in but uh, when you're when you polish your boots every day or get yelled at for not polishing your boots every day you learn a little trick and one of the tricks is to burn the the wax and the, when you burn the wax you burn the alcohol that's in the wax or whatever the heck it is off and uh, unfortunately I, this is out of frame or I would have done some secret squirrel Geordie effects uh, with these and, and it, it did catch a little ember on a couple of the end pieces and I ended up uh, that right there you see there was a piece still burning and I licked my finger and stuck it on there but now I'm taking some 4-0 steel wool so this is something you can do with the scrap pieces. Uh, the upcoming videos, uh, there's one uh, I'm working on the clock in between. And uh, here's that guy. I kind of like the looks of him. Yeah, but I'm working on the clock and, and I noticed walking out to the studio, the, the, my big old dog, English Mastiff, comes out. There's a piece of that cottonwood. Here's one I did uh, last week and lost all of the video on it. This was carved in about five minutes. And once again, there was no pattern for this. I just kind of 
let him happen and here's another one that was done a week ago and I also lost all of the the video for this character here but that's what you can do with those little scraps I, I was wondering what you did with them and uh, that's a great great example for those um, so like subscribe to see some of the stuff you saw at the beginning and the finish of that and uh, again this is a little short video thanks a lot this has been Ben with Studio on the Lake <laughs>